Hello everyone, today I will explain how to run uh, a paired two sample t test or a paired t test. Um, this, is, this test is actually quite similar to the independent samples t test. The only difference is that we're no longer dealing with independent samples. So we're not looking at differences between means of independent groups, we're actually looking at dependent groups. So I'll explain what that means with an example. Um, this cute animal is a wombat, it's a native to Australia. Um, and in a, in a zoo in France, they have 20 of these wombats and they're actually going to try to put them on a new diet. And the question that researchers have if, is if this diet has an effect on weight of this wombat. So in other words, if the wombat will lose weight or gain weight uh, if they put it on the diet. So that's actually the research question. So let's, let's look at the data. So we um, attach the data with the standard R coding. And then let's look at it. So these are the IDs of the 20 wombats. It's 1 to 20. And this is their weights in kilograms before um, the new diet was introduced. And this is four weeks later uh, when the, when the wombats uh, had been on the diet for four weeks. So as you can see, some of them gained weight, um, but also some of them lost weight. And now the question is if whether or not there's a an increase in weight or a decrease in weight due to this diet, or maybe there's no change whatsoever. So that's what we want to find out. So um, the first assumption of a paired sample t-test is that the independent variable consists of a matched pair. So that's a pair that's not uh, independent. In this case, we do measurements on the same wombat. So before and after on the same individual, so it's not independent. So that means that we can actually use a paired sample t-test if, of course, the other assumption has also been met. And this second assumption is that the distribution of the differences of these matched pairs has to follow a normal distribution. So not the two groups separately, so not the before and after, but only the, the difference between the two groups. So we can easily calculate the difference using this code. So we name it differences and then we just subtract weight before uh, from weight after and we run it. And then we draw a normal quantile plot of these differences. So this is on the right, this is the normal quantile plot. And as you can see, the, the dots, the data, the data points are pretty much on this straight line. So it doesn't look too bad, it looks good. So I think we can use uh, a paired uh, sample t-test. And then this is the code for the test itself. Um, so it's t.test and then wait before and wait after. And then the mu is the difference that we expect. So in this case, we, we expect no effect of the diet. This is actually the null hypothesis. So the means are equal. So mu is zero. It's two-sided test because we do not know whether there will be a gain in weight or a loss of weight. And then this is very important. Don't forget to add this if you run a, two, or if you run a paired sample t-test uh, and that's paired is true or paired is t. This indicates that you're looking at pairs. And also we can ask for or request the confidence interval. So let's run this test. And then we see the output. Uh, if you write the paper, report the t-value, minus 2.7 in this case, report the degrees of freedom, 19 in this case, and of course the p-value. And the p-value uh, is lower than 0.05, so we reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative hypothesis, meaning that, um, well, there is a difference in weight before and after. And the mean difference is minus 1.5. So if you want to visualize this, um, you could do several, you could draw several figures or graphs. Um, whatever you do, if you're looking at paired samples, uh, don't draw a box plot because the box plot will not give you the information of the pairs. It will treat data as if it's two independent groups, which is not. So I found this, uh, this code, which is much better to visualize pair data. It's called matplot code. It's quite long code. So um, you can find this code uh, in the link, the download link below this video if you want to check it out. Um, so I'll run it so you can see for yourself. So this is what it looks like if you run it. So here we have all the weights before the diet and here at the right, we have all the weights of the wombats after the diet. And then the 
the same individuals are connected with the lines. And then you see that for most individuals, there's actually an increase in weight and there's three or four individuals where there has been a loss in weight. Uh, but overall, as we've shown already with the p-value of 0.01, um, there's a significant increase in wombat weight due to the diet. So the diet has an effect on wombat weight. That's the conclusion of this study.